blessings of the Lord are truly upon his people, and we're thankful for such a wonderful Savior. Amen. 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 When we weren't looking, he was look, he, when we weren't looking for him, he was looking for us. Amen. For the Bible tells the, that the, from those that sought him not, right. he has come. So we're thankful that he even looked past our ignorance and decided to call us. Now it's up to us that we are aware to follow closely, as close as we can to him. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to be speaking today from the book of Isaiah. We're going to read this chapter standing up today. Isaiah chapter 26, beginning with verse 17. Lord, we pray that you would invest into us today, Lord, that we might be profitable in your work. Bless us, I pray. Touch my, anoint my mind, my lips, I pray, and open every heart. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Isaiah 26, verse 17. Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth the wind. We cannot... We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Then it changes somewhat. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of the herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be past. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> we have uh, passed, we have just gone past Pentecost. From the time of Pentecost to the end of the fall feast, or to the middle of the fall feast, the rapture season, there are 120 days. There's, there's four months of 30 days. There's 120. It's a markdown, uh, it's a markdown uh, Countdown, in a sense. <clears throat> this, is what is considered the, this is what is considered the harvest season. And it's unique that the Lord's, the festivals of the Lord have this, have this structure in it. So from, when you have Passover and then you have uh, Pentecost, there was, there was 50 days in between. And then there's 120 days, the number of the church, to draw our attention. is The number of the church is from... Pentecost all the way to the Feast of Atone, Day of Atonement. And so it is something that is unique. It is so unique in the prophetic structure of the Bible. So <clears throat> I feel that since we're in that period of time, we're going to be uh, not only are we going to be mixing it up with telling you how we ought to live by, according to the scriptures, but at this season, these four months, we're going to be speaking concerning uh, prophetic things. Uh, I believe it's, it's important because this uh, repetition needs to be brought forth. And there are many here that have never really heard. And there are those that uh, need to hear it again. Amen. Why? Because everybody gets revelation at a different time. Nobody gets the revelation, boom, at the same time. You might get revel we might get revelation at the same time, but not about the same things. All right? But... Uh, concerning the rapture of the church, it is, a, it is a, an event, it is a very important event in, in the scriptures. Uh, this is made to be a minor event by many individuals that don't understand it, and that is because, uh, and because of their lack of understand it, understanding, they, they minimize it and they almost say that there's not going to be one or they place it into the they place it into the tribulation or at the end of the tribulation where it wouldn't do very many people any good. So <clears throat> it's important that that to me is very important 
So I'm trying to make it important. I want it to be important to you. And so uh, this wasn't taught. This wasn't taught by to me. It was it's what you call revelation. The Bible says somebody is sent. Apparently they're sent with a message. This is part of the message of of being saved, of the message of salvation, of Acts 2.38 and so forth. So just the way that was, uh, I, I heard it from a preacher, all the core part, portions, but it, it, not until it clicked and in my soul it became, uh, the, uh, the understanding came. Then with the understanding of, the, uh, of water baptism, the kingdom, how the Lord set up salvation, the revelation of, uh, of Jesus Christ from the beginning, from that point, then everything else Prophetic stems from that. If you, have, if you don't understand who Jesus really is, then you really will, will, will be unsure about the rapture. You might believe the rapture, but you won't have a total understanding of it because everything is founded on Jesus. So you have to have that distinct understanding about who Jesus is and why we baptize in Jesus' name and why we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And now I believe God is giving us, opening our understanding concerning our, our uh, privilege of healing, receiving healing and, uh, and peace in our hearts and minds because we are getting near that point in time and the earth is very, is very uh, sick right now and there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of sin is reaching up into heaven where, where uh, the Lord is going to move in a very special manner in the very near future. And that is going to be with an event called the rapture of the church. Can we give the Lord a clap offering? <clears throat> now, a lot of individuals that I know, I'm shocked that they don't believe in the rapture. Or they used to, but, and I realize that they, they don't give me scriptures to prove otherwise. But they are, their scriptures, I can use them to prove the rapture. So, but they can't use the scriptures that I give them. They just discard them. I can use theirs. I can use the whole Bible. And you should be able to use the whole Bible without saying, well, I don't believe that. Well, you might, you, the thing is, you will believe, you, you will believe what they're saying, but in its proper context. And then you, you, you understand why it doesn't nullify the rapture or any such thing. You understand where they're coming from. And so I've done this recently. I've listened to individuals say why learned men, and they always leave out scriptures that will, that will disprove their point. My interest today is, is to get you to a place that you would be confident how, of where, why there is a rapture or where it's going to take place at. So we'll begin with that, and we'll start with the reading of the verses that we read uh, today. All right. <clears throat> From Isaiah 26, the first two verses that we read speak about, uh, speak about a, a time of tribulation in the future. And it says, like a woman with child that draw near to the time of her delivery. We know that, we know that that's what, uh, uh, the it, that always refers to the tribulation. And here, when, it comes, when it's brought to us, it says that she's going to cry out of her pangs and so forth. And so in the Old Testament, let me say this first. In the Old Testament, you are given what are called uh, shadows of events by the Lord. In a sense, it almost blurts out different places, truth here and a truth there. And, and when we read them, if you read them, it's, many times they don't make sense the way they're coming out. Because they weren't for that time to be understood. But since we got the New Testament, it talks like a woman in travail. And it talks about the rapture is going to be like like a woman that uh, her, her birth pangs came upon her and then it simply, uh, the tribulation begins and it brings forth a, a new nation of Israel in a sense. So here is telling us that there's going to be a, uh, you, you felt in a sense the birth pangs and you have felt the, the things that are going to come upon the earth but since the time is not yet, uh, he continues to tell them what, it's like, that you're supposed to bring something forth and nothing has come forth. Israel has always had difficulties. Always. So then it tells us this. It says, uh, we have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. Nothing. And we have, wrought, and we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. 
Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. In other words, the Jews believe that the Messiah will come, the world will fall, and they will be, they will be taken care of, or their Messiah will have come and subdued all the Gentile nations. So this is what these verses are saying here. And so the Bible has been written to us upon whom the ends of the earth are come. Then it tells us, and it speaks about the rapture in a cryptic form. It says this, Thy dead men shall live. See, the way the Lord does it, here little, there little. The Bible says that that's the way the scriptures are written. Here little, there little. They're never written in concise because the Lord, this is too immense. The mind of God is so immense that he places things in different places, either to reveal or to conceal. To the people of God, to reveal. To the ones that don't have a love for the truth, it is to conceal. So we pray today that God will, will give you some enlightenment in this portion. It says this. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. This is the Lord speaking. No, he's speaking. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of the herbs. And the earth shall cast out the dead. Now, it's like, it's like code. I call it cryptic. Okay, it's... it's it's like a code for other futures that would already have the New Testament in their hands to be able to decipher what God is saying. You, we have the New Testament in our hands and together then finally, finally make sense. So <clears throat> it's, it, it's, it tells us, then it says, come my people, enter into thy chambers. Now what we just read concerning thy dead, thy dead men shall live is talking about the resurrection of some type. The dead men are going to arise with, with, their, with his dead body. Notice what's happening. There's, there's going to be the dead of the earth are going to arise with. How can God have a dead body? It die, he died for us. That's what it's saying. He died for us. They shall arise with my, with my body. They shall arise. Can you see that? Now... <clears throat> He said, with my dead body shall they arise. In other words, since we have the New Testament, it tells us that since the Lord is risen, people don't believe, but you know, they, he died, was resurrected, he went to the heavens. He is coming back. And with his body that tasted death, shall, shall the raptured saints, our dead body shall arise with his dead body. That's what it's saying. This, this is how we, we understand now. But these verses by themselves don't make too much sense. Then it tells us, it tells us, for as the dew, excuse me, uh, it says that the earth shall cast out the dead. And the only picture that you can sort of see this is when, when apparently when Jesus arose and the graves were open, they knew the graves were open. So as the earth cast out her dead. And that's what's going to happen in the near future of the rapture. The, the, the graves are going to be open. Because the dead bodies that are in there are going to erupt out of there. The dead bodies are going to be chained the moment to the divine to meet his dead body or he that di had died for us. And so shall we ever be. So this is what, this is what the book of Isaiah noted. This is in the Old Testament. In order, and and this, is laying the, this is laying the foundation for the rapture. Because then it, it starts to clarify the rest in its proper order. It says, come my people. It's speaking to the future, all right? It says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. So it's giving us a picture like we're supposed to hide ourselves in a chamber. We're supposed to, it's, it's like the ark. Like they had to get into the, into the ark, into the, the three levels of the ark, into the chambers. So we have an idea, since we have read the Old Testament, what it's talking about. So it says this, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be past. Okay, prior it talked about the woman in travail. Today we read about that, did we not? Can we say amen? Then that's, what it's, that's going to be the indignation. Then it tells us, it gives a warning, gives a, a uh, since, since, 
Something's going to happen, terrible is going to happen in the future. It says, hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. In, in other words, I want all my people, he's saying, to go hide and shout. It's like a, like a foxhole. He said, get in your foxhole. Get in your bomb shelter. Get in your place, a secret chamber that I will provide for you. That's what he's saying. Hide yourself. You have to, the people that he's talking to have to be willing to hide themselves. They have to be willing to obey and say, be warned. And just the way that the eight souls were hid themselves in the ark, and then the ark closed, it says, hide thyself from the indignation. The anger of the Lord was the flood. But this is talking about the future. He's saying, hide thyself from my anger. That's what he's saying. So he has mercy upon his people. And he tells us to, be, to hide ourselves, it says, for a little moment. Now, this verse of scripture here, hide thyself as it were for a little moment. A little moment there is, that, that, that Hebrew word is, hide thyself for a wink. That's what it's saying. That's a moment. The, the word wink is used for a moment. Or the word for the word for wink is used, they use the word moment for it. They're going to put wink there. Have you ever heard that before? In the twinkling of an eye. So in the New Testament, now we realize what it's saying, what the Old Testament is saying. It is written in the Old Testament, there's going to be a rapture because here talking about, hide, it tells us to hide ourselves for a, for a, for a moment in a, in a, in a wink. Now, when you, when you look at these verses then, I, I totally understand what he's saying, and I shared this with you, that what he's saying is that it tells us to hide ourselves. How do we hide ourselves? Well, we are, we are, our life is hid with Christ in God. In water baptism, we are given the choice to hide ourselves. You hide yourself by being buried. That's your bomb shelter. That is your... That is the place of safety. That is your foxhole. It says, hide yourself as it were for a little moment for the rapture. Because just the way you go down into death, you're going to come up with his dead body. Amen. You with me? Amen. So this is what, these verses are powerful. They're tremendous. This is where the Apostle Paul got the verses for the book of Corinthians where he, where he used in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. This is where he, he, he knew his confirmation was there in the Old Testament. The Lord showed me that about 15 years ago, where he got, where he understood it, and through much prayer and, and some fasting, I, I understood exactly what, how, is, how it shows in the Old Testament. Now, I already believed in, I already believed in the rapture, just, just like Enoch being translated before the flood. I understood the rapture that it's going to be prior to but a lot of people will argue, well, that's just, that's not so. Well, it is so. God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Before he destroys Sodom and Gomorrah, he took Lot and his daughters out. Abraham prayed that they would be, and this would happen. So it's prior to the great event that the righteous are going to be saved. Amen. He, we're going to be saved. We're going to hide ourselves from the indignation. We're, and you have a choice to hide yourself. You can hide yourself or you can just not hide yourself. You can be baptized or you can not be, you don't have to be baptized. But you will know the difference on that day. Now, the next verse of scripture then tells us something very important. It, it gives us what is called the timing of the event. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So why are we going to be... The hiding comes first and then the Lord comes out. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the earth. So this is the indignation. We're hid from the indignation. The rapture or the church, the winking of the eye, the twinkling of the eye happens before the Lord comes out of his place to inhabit, to, to punish the inhabitants of the earth. Can you see that? 
Now, there are no other verses of Scripture that can undo that. And everything else is the same. Enoch, uh, the, 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 the entry into the Enter into the ark before the flood. Everything, does, everything is in that order. Also before the seven bad years in the days of Joseph, he got married and to Asenath. And before the marriage took place, before the great time of trouble, which is like the church being married to the Lord. So there is no contest. It can't be argued. It can't be argued. I mean, you can argue all you want, but you can't. You're, if you argue against the truth, uh, you're, you know, you, and, and if you're watching and you want to argue and you want to go through the tribulation, you can go through it. But to those that want to hide themselves, he tells us, hide yourselves. So our lives are hid with Christ in God. We have put on Jesus. We're hidden. Yeah, this is what the Bible tells us. This is why our lives change from the inside out to prove that we are hidden. We lose our old self and a new self comes out and our lives change. This is why you shouldn't be afraid to change. This is why you shouldn't be, allowed, you shouldn't be afraid to leave your bad habits, your bad attitudes. This is why you should hide yourself. That's part of hiding yourself so that you can be in the image of Jesus, especially that going that direction when he comes for his people. Amen. I give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. So then, <clears throat> that portion is, is the first part that I want to bring to you. And, 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 I, and I went ahead and gave some of the other verses away already. But let me just change things a, a, a little bit here. The Bible tells us this. I already spent a lot of time on that. Uh, I'm going to switch things here in my mind here on the fly. When the Bible says your body, his body shall live together with, our, with my dead body, he says, not always say my dead body. The Lord's claiming a dead body. The living God claims a dead body. Of course, that's his son that he resurrected. He said, in three days, I will raise it up. Destroy this temple, he said, meaning his body, and in three days, I'll raise it up. So that's, we know that's what he was talking about, correct? So then we look at John, then and it takes new life. John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. So that's where he says, my dead, your, the, your dead body shall dwell, live with my, dwell, with my dead body. He says, we're going to live together. The earth shall give them up. This is what he's talking about here when he says he gives them a promise. They don't even understand it because they haven't really read the book of Isaiah. So he's telling them something that only the church can understand. And then you are to understand this, that the Lord said he's going to go and prepare a place for us. I will come again. They didn't even know he was really leaving. They didn't know what was going to happen. But he's telling them this. And receive you unto myself. What had, he had died for us are going to be, res, those that are resurrected from the dead, the raptured saints, are going to be added to where? To his dead body. All right? That's Old Testament language. New Testament is, the, the, the pure revelation to us is that he went to prepare a place for us. And he said he's going to return. And he's going to receive Whoever said, whoever the you is that believes, and I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So he's personally coming for those that have a personal relationship of obedience to the Lord. He's coming for you. <laughs> Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise. I am, as, the, as things are happening in the world, I, I'm excited for, for the revelation, for the truth. I'm excited for the promise. He simply says, I go to prepare a place for you. 
It is so, you can, you can be so sure of it that he says, listen, if it was not so, I would have told you. God can't lie. So he's not getting, in other words, he said, I'm not getting your hopes up for nothing. That's what he's saying. He says, if, if this was not so, I would have told you so. Like, you know, you're going to be dead forever in your sins. Or you, you're not going to be ready. He would, that's what he would tell us. He can't lie. No, no, nothing evil can come out of him. He has come so that he wants us to be with him. So he's telling us, if you will obey me, he says, I am going to come back so that and receive you unto myself. Why? Because you went and you got into the grave with him in water baptism. And so you are locked to a promise you are, you, are, you are locked into what's called a covenant. A covenant is a powerful thing. A powerful, it's like, it's like a covenant is like a marriage, a marriage agreement. Till, Lydia, till death do us part. That's a covenant. It's not, you know, till it stops not working. <laughs> if it were so, I would have told you. No, it's a covenant. It's a covenant that says, that's his covenant right there. He said, I'm going to go build you something and I'm coming back for you. So that where I am, that's in heaven, all right? So that where I am, that's where he's coming from. He's going somewhere. Where'd he go? He went into heaven, correct? He said, I go to prepare. That's what he's doing. That's what he did when he went up there. He went and prepared. In your wildest dreams, you don't understand what your mansion looks like. You're hooked on the one on Camelback over here in Paradise Valley. <laughs> you and I look at this and say, man, look at what they've got here, man. It's amazing what they have. I didn't even know fossils like that existed. Look at the marble top. Look at that. Man, you can think and the water turns on. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. They're probably out there. I don't know. But, you know, it's like, the other, day, the other day, I went to go get a, a soda on the deal, and, and you don't even touch the button. You put it between the two little deals. You, say, I'm like, you look like you're crazy. You're going. <laughs> and the soda comes out. My Pepsi Coke comes out half and half. And you don't get no germs on your finger because you don't touch nothing. You just you know. try it. Go over there. Be like a little kid. It's like you're playing an instrument. So this is what he said. Yeah, I'll go to prepare a place for you. He said that he will come back and receive us unto himself so that where he is, we might be. So he wants us to be there. Before, before the indignation, before that time of trouble, that's where he wants you. We got that from the book of, of Isaiah when it's going to happen. Now, are you still with me? Now, <clears throat> Give me a second here. Now what? Two, three. Got excited. I put my, 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 my I, I reshuffled my deals here. Oh, here we go. Now, to, to give you the, the verse, in case you want to write this down, 1 Corinthians chapter. Oh, here we go. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 50. Now, I, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the, the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit uh, incorruption. Behold, he said, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So what is that saying? It's saying, not everybody's going to be dead. This is what he starts adding. Not everybody's going to be dead that's going to come out of their grave. Some, some are going to be alive. He says, this is the mystery. Behold, I, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall all be changed. That means the living and the dead are going to be changed. The dead first are going to come out of their graves. And then we which are alive and remain are going to come up to meet him. So there'll be a witness if one day you're out here and you look toward the cemetery and, and you see something glorious happen. Don't think you missed it. Just wait, just wait, wait, wait. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
They're first, we're second. How much the interval is between that, I don't know. I imagine it's going to happen, everything's going to happen in the moment, in that one twinkling of an eye. Where the Lord is, like I said, I, I, the way I envision it, envision it, he's going to rip the fabric of reality. What they call the, the space-time continuum. In a moment that's indivisible, it's eternal. So a moment that cannot be divided, that's going to be the door. And in that moment, boom, boom. They're first, we're second. It says, in a moment, remember what we read that back there, correct? In the moment, then he uses the word in the twinkling of an eye. That's, that's what uh, Isaiah used. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So, the dead are going to be raised. They're already, there's already, uh, their bodies already were corru corrupted. So, they're going to give, begin a new body, and they're going to come up in incorruptible. A, a body given to them for eternity. And we, which are conscious, are just going to be changed and be given a new body. That which is on the inside is going to be exposed to the outside, and we are going to be, we, the Bible said, we shall all be changed. In other words, we're all going to be what is called the same from that point, and we shall be changed. For this corruption... For this, for this corruptible, so since we have been corrupted in the grave, it says, for this corruptible, we're corruptible. We can continue to get older and older. One of these days, you know, we'll run out of days and we'll, we're going to be falling to corruption. For a corruptible must put on incorruption. For we which are corruptible in our life, in our body. You don't believe you're, corrupt, you're, you're corruptible right now. You're corruptible. It's like... The older you get, the more wrinkles we're going to have, okay? We're going that direction. We're going in negative directions, in a sense. Our bodies are. But spiritually, we're being in a positive direction. So then, it says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So that's what's going to happen. You're going to have, God's going to put immortality. And immortality means no more mortality. Mortality means the possibility of dying. No, now you live forever. You are going to be an immortal. And it's not going to be by any witchcraft, that kind of seeking immortality. No, there's only one way to find immortality is in Jesus Christ. The king of the ages. The king of the giver of life. So we're going to receive immortality. Then it says, for this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. Excuse me. For, so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So in other words, death has been destroyed here in, in lives. Death is swallowed up in victory. So on that day, if you are alive on that day, victory came into you. The victory that you had in your heart is going to be the victory. Like, what was, that? What was this all about that we live for, that we, that we live for God? It's for immortality. Immortality. No, you, you, are, the, you are the coming uh, uh, generation of, of people. You know, in, the, in the imagination is that we have to see sometimes... Uh, what are called uh, comic book heroes, you know, uh, superheroes. You are going to be more than any of those superheroes. It's amazing. Yet your abilities are going to be amazing because God is working through you. This is why the church is going to be governing on this earth. That's what the Bible said we shall reign with him. And the Lord will, with a rod of iron, he is going to command. That means whatever he says, you have to do. Or he's going to send brother so-and-so to go take care of business. You're going to be what is called an ambassador. Ambassador to New York. 
And you're going to have to tell them, clean up your streets. <laughs> and be, to, be on church on time in Jerusalem next year. Right. Yeah. And they're going to be scared of you. <laughs> they will obey because you have brought God's word to them. So this is what the Bible talks about, that ye are God's. It's talking about a future thing. To whom the word of the Lord came. And so since the word of the Lord has come to you, he is making you a child of God, a child of the king. It does not yet appear what we shall be. In other words, it's hard to comprehend it right now. But you have to believe what God's word is telling you here so that you can live for that. So you can have a goal, you know, instead of have, working hard for a, a house here that you have to constantly, once you get, you have to constantly be fixing you're working for a house that God is building for you where it is built without hands. It is built by his word. He, he, all he goes, when and did it, he went to prepare a house for us. He went to make you a mansion by the word of his mouth. Your address is there. You have to believe and have the faith and know this is why you live for God. This is why you sacrifice. This is why you obey the word. This is why, because it's not like it's, it's, not like it's with, without reward. No. But in order to gain this reward, we must suffer with him. We do. We have to say no to the world. We have to say no to sin and honor his word. And he helps us to do it. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. So this is, this is what he's telling us, and this is what you must get in your mind in case, in case you, you have been taught that there is no rapture, in case you, you've understood or, or you've been confused by others, or maybe you said it on your own and you're really not there, but maybe you're leaning towards the rapture. Well, this should get you all the way in on God's word. Not on my word, on God's word. Let's give the Lord a clap offering again. Now... <clears throat> He was already, the Lord already had given to us a, uh, knew that things, individuals would come teaching different things. The Bible called them damnable heresies, is what he calls them. And so when, when these uh, uh, concepts, some of them actually came from well-meaning people that want to do the right thing, but uh, more than likely they weren't, they weren't sent, sent by God. And so they have their own ideas thrown into it. It's hard when you're a minister, it's hard to, to be a minister and to wait on God on an idea. Or, because it might be yours and you don't know if it's God's. But when you finally, uh, when a true minister finally finds it in the word so that he can understand it, then he can project it out. But when they learn from somebody else, and well, my pastor taught me this, and it doesn't matter what, it, what has the Holy Ghost, what has the Holy Ghost shown you? Every one of us is given the Holy Ghost to understand some of the things of God, especially the things that are freely given to us of God. So, <clears throat> so I pray that you that, that, that this this portion here you have. Uh, it has somehow enlightened your path. Now, in the book, in the book of Second Thessalonians two and one, the Bible says the church had come to a place when the Thessalonians were being persecuted, and so the Bible hadn't really been put together yet. But they, but the, but Paul had already taught them about about the coming of the Lord. And he, and he is there writing them a letter that they should not be discouraged because the rapture hasn't taken place already. That's what he's telling them. So in this portion, their persecution is so intense that they're wondering what's happened. They're, they're worried that they probably, they probably missed the rapture. But he tells them in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 1. Remember, they didn't have the, the, the book. This is one of the letters of a future Bible. This is a letter to them. He says, now we beseech you, brethren, this is the other apostles, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So he's telling them, 
Now, I'm, I'm uh, beseeching you. Now, listen to me real good, brethren. And I'm telling you this by the trusting in that the Lord is coming. Uh, he's coming for us. And he's going to gather us together. In other words, this is going to be a rapture. He says, this is going to be a rapture. That's what he tells them. And I beseech you by that. I beseech you by the rapture. I'll put it real easy. I beseech you by the rapture, he tells them. He says, that you be not shaken in mind, neither troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor as by letter from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, that the tribulation is, has begun. Let no man deceive by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away, that the man of sin should be revealed. So, he's telling us that there's going to have to be a, uh, a, 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 a Taking away, a falling away. This word is apostasia, which means that something has to happen to reveal the man of sin. All right? He tell, it's, this is the rapture. I come to you by the rapture. He said, listen, but there has to come a, a revelation or a removal of something. He says, and when, when this is taken away, when there's a, what is called a falling away, it tells us the man of sin shall be revealed. He's called the son of perdition. He's going to be the, he's going to be the beast. He's going, to be, he's going to be up here. But there has to be a, something ha, has to be moved away so that this man can come. Are you with me? So he tells them. Remember ye not, not given to remember, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. So they already are schooled in this. To us, it's a partial message, all right? So they've already been schooled. He's trying to remember what I told you when I was with you. And now he says, you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So we know what is holding back the Antichrist that he might be revealed in his proper time. That's what he's saying. And then he makes a statement. For the mystery, for the mystery of iniquity already works, doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So it's saying that the Holy Ghost is holding everything back. The church, the Holy Ghost in the church is holding everything back. The mystery of iniquity is working, but the, he can't appear. The spirit of the devil is already working, but he couldn't appear. Because the spirit of the God in the church is holding it back. It says, and it says, only he who now leadeth, who has the power, will let. You know, like, I'm doing it, the Lord says. Until he, the Spirit of God, is taken away and the church is taken out of the way. And so when the church is taken out of the way, that is what is known as the apostasia, that are, are being moved away so that the Antichrist and all his powers can appear and everything else. The rapture has to take first. The church cannot be here. Church can't be here. We know in the book Old Testament, we already know. We hide ourselves prior because the Lord is going to come out. Can you say amen? amen? So we get the understanding of what the Lord is, is, is going to do. It says, this man, when he comes, when the, when, when the beast comes, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, he's going to deceive all that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Notice what he says. For this cause God shall send them Strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Everybody say the truth. Yes. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. In other words, people that do not want to live right. They, they, they maybe hear the truth, but they don't love the truth. They, under, they have heard it. They might hear it every week. On one, every seven days they might hear it. But they have pleasure instead in unrighteousness. Every, every week they understand that they're given the ability to do right, but they have pleasure in unrighteousness. Know what? Pleasure. They enjoy evil. Pleasure in unrighteousness. So this is what the Lord says. He's going to send them a delusion to not believe in the things of God, neither the rapture. And he's going to send them the devil so that they can believe him. He's the great delusion that he is their savior. And you know what? The Bible was all false and, and all kind of stuff like this is going to happen immediately after. So it's to those that love to sin. Now, this is why it's so important to continue to serve the Lord in the fear of God. 
This is why we serve the Lord in, in the beauty of holiness. This is why we, we go the other way and we err on the side of righteousness. Yeah. This is why, you know, when some people, you know, just, you know, it, it's, some people might overdo it. Some, some churches might overdo it in their holiness standard. That's all right. It's better to overdo it. Keep, keep, keep overdoing it if you want. Yeah. Modesty is good. This is where it's at. But, you know, why criticize? Just, just, hey, the more they do it, and as long as they remain, as long as they don't think that's going to save them, that's good. That doesn't save you, but it is, it proves that you are going the right direction. It is, it gives you the, you maintain good works. So, you know, if, when you serve the Lord, you're, you know, you're not going to always look like a drunkard. Yeah. You say you were a drunkard before and you get saved. Because of a witness of God that you become a child, of, you're not, still not going to be a drunkard or, or dress like a drunkard anymore. Something happens on the inside where things change on the outside. Yeah. A woman of the street will not be you know, once she comes to the house of God and God does something for her, then, you know, a year down the road, she's not going to have the same inclinations. Amen. Hopefully the week after she won't. But even things will change on the outside. This is why, this is why, we, this is why we preach a, a, a modesty and, and we, we practice to be uh, sober about stuff and we're not overdone in everything. Yeah, because we want to be more like him than the world. Because if the love of the world is in us, the love of the Father is not in us. So every one of you has the opportunity to learn this lesson at your level. But you better learn. Amen. Say, Lord, lead me of the Holy Ghost. That whatever I allow, whatever I allow to do in my life, Lord, let it be for your glory. And if it's not for your glory, show me, Lord, that it's not for your glory. And, and let me grow into be more like you. And so can we offer the Lord one more clap offering? And, and we'll end with this. <clears throat> we'll end with this. Revelation 3 and 10. This is right before the, when the Lord gives the revelation of Jesus Christ. It tells that church of, of uh, Philadelphia, I believe. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience... I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. So the tribulation are for, is for the earth dwellers. Earth dwellers. That means people that are, that are just fixed on the things of the world. Those are earth dwellers. We, we dwell here, but our, we live here, but we're not what you call earth dwellers. We have a kingdom that we're looking for. We're not looking to make a name for ourselves here. We're looking for... We're looking for a kingdom. The, the Lord said that the Lord told us he's going to come back for us. For he's prepared for us a city. He's prepared for us a mansion. And so we're going to, we have our heart to dwell somewhere else. And he tells us once again here that he will keep us from the hour of temptation. That's the tribulation. Before the tribulation begins. So in the Old Testament... Is there is before at the end of the book is before we cannot afford to miss it. Amen. Stand with me tonight. I heard about this about it's been 50, 50 some years ago now about the rapture of the church, maybe. And I'm closer to it than when I first believed. Amen. Many of our elders have gone on before and their bodies have, have their, their bodies await the sound of the Lord saying, come up hither as of a trumpet sound. And our dead loved ones are going to rise up and we'll be there and it's, it's just, it's just an amazing, an amazing, an amazing promise that God has given to, you, to us. If it were not so, he would have told us. 
Amen. Lord, we're so thankful today for your blessing, for your kindness, for allowing me to give this, uh, these that as you are preparing them for this last day, for these last moments that we're going to be here, we see everything that is happening in Israel right now. We see the movements of the armies. We see the plagues that are happening upon the earth. Lord, how they are trying to co uh, control humanity to become a one, a one people. But we know, Lord Jesus, that you have your own people separate from the people of the world. Help us to draw closer to you and to see the end which is in sight by faith. And everyone said, Amen.